In today's episode, number two of four in the series of videos sponsored by Epic War Thrones, we're looking mostly at generals and buildings so you can get a more rounded understanding of how to start this game. Alright lads, we're back with uh, Epic War Thrones. Uh, we're back to our little... I mean, can we call it a kingdom yet? I, I, I don't really know. So if you recall last time, we, uh, we set about dispatching uh, all these level 2 tiles and level 1 tiles. I think we did a pretty nice job. Uh, but today, instead of just messing around, I'm going to take you through a little bit more uh, in detail, we say. Slight, slightly more of a tutorial tone, I think. Firstly, for our main man Panzar, you can get another uh, another general. And I think we're going to bring over uh, this woman from our Legion 3. We're going to bring her over. We're going to get transferred. All right, so first things first, I want to take you guys in a little bit more detail onto like the different formations. So last time I touched briefly and said you can have these different formations. Um, and it shows up what's doing here. What you can also do is bring your generals into different formations here and you can see it adjusting the top so if i move this guy back here uh let's say i want to move her here and then go in a square you can see whereabouts they're going to be staying so this guy went in the middle and i'm going to bring him up so that is depending on everyone's skills so we've got two cavalry officers here we have two cavalry officers and then we've got uh this pikeman here so for example uh if you recall last time we fought against a bunch of archers so archers clearly you want at the back and uh the spearman you want Either side, and then you can look specifically at their skill, skills, skills. <laughs> so this is more of a support class, as you can see from this. So this gives all of our generals receiving combo skill has a twenty percent. We can upgrade that now to twenty-two percent chance to dodge the damage and recover a fixed amount of troops. So quite early on, we want to focus on uh, troop recovery because resources are a bit scarce. So we're going to click enhance it to make our big boy Pan uh, stronger. We're gonna we're gonna sacrifice. Uh, hmm, who should sacrifice? Uh, these guys. And, uh, and 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 this one as well, all of them. Right, because of that, we've got these skill points, 170 left. And then this one gives you. Uh, I mean, this is a bit of a bit of a bit of a gamble here. 50% chance to grant yourself exhaust, uh, but it does deal a bunch of damage to two random enemy generals. So we're gonna enhance that, big that up a little bit, uh, and then well, Pan looks like a gambling man. Oh my god, I can make his. <laughs> I can make his little rings go. Go on, Pan. <laughs> Dance for me. So we're just going to chuck everyone in the front line for now, um, and pan in the middle. In a square formation. And because of that, let's go and march on this level 3 one. We haven't actually been able to previously fight level 3 ones, but hopefully with this new and improved army, we should be able to. It's actually the same amount of troops, uh, and well, I, I, this is the guy that we killed two of his brothers that look exactly like him, so I'm not surprised that he kind of wants a bit of revenge here. God damn, that's a lot of troops. Okay, some of my men look like they're running. That guy's like Naruto running away. It's kind of hard to tell who's winning. I think one of our generals is, is, is about to go down. But the boys are coming to help her. Nope, she's down. She's gone. The boys are coming in, but a bit too late. I think we definitely need to hide her in the back in future. But that should be it. I think everyone's injured. Excellent. And we did lose like 600 troops. Well, 200 are dead. We lost 600 in the fighting. Also, I want to point out that there are these uh, these quest things. So if you click up here on the left, you can uh, complete these quests and they give you loads of rewards, which is really useful. I can claim this. Ooh, Warriors of Excellence. Let's get an Emerging Heroes guy. Uh, my apologies, not guy. <laughs> I like this Warriors of Excellence thing. I, I kind of want to kind of want to do that. Let's get one of those. Ooh, that man looks very suspicious. Oh, we can also get our taxes. Let's uh, collect those. This guy was our first general, so he's actually decently level. He's uh, level 7 right now. Uh, not going to upgrade him any anything, but he's, he's just, uh, yeah, he's quite useful. So we'll probably pop him in if we've got, like, our main army. So the idea is you do want, like, a main army. Let me uh, readjust, let me shuffle things around so you can see that. In the meantime, let me show you a bit more about the building. So last time I briefly touched on this sort of stuff, but let me take you through it properly. So first things first, we have our warehouse here that obviously uh, stores all of these resources. Here we have the farm, which produces this resource, obviously being crops. The wood mill, guess what it produces? Wood. The quarry and the foundry. Uh, so these sort of make up your core resources to uh, to create stuff, I suppose. So I want to unlock these uh, sentry camps, because then I can actually like construct sentry things, which I want to show you, hopefully, in today's episode. So for that, we're going to need some more stone, which is the bane of my existence constantly, in order to, uh, to build the palace. So let's go set some of our boys on that. All right, Zhao done. Uh, let's get some low-level guys. Here we go. Get this creepy dude in you. Ooh, that was a poor turn of phrase. Also of interest is the uh, the tech tree. So obviously you've got the barracks that we looked at last time. Uh, that's the number of legions. So right now we can have three legions, which is great. Uh, the academy was something I just upgraded to get our third um, 
officer. So that's within the uh, legions themselves. So each army can have a certain amount. So if I click on Pan Feng, the boys, they've got three here. Um, and that's because I got the, the academy. But if I select down here, there are loads of generals. So who do I think that you should go for initially? Uh, well, firstly, it's your own personal preference. I would say the most important thing is that you are enjoying it. So I prefer Pan Feng, because I personally relate to the character of this massive guy who takes up the entire screen. However, if you're looking to uh, to min-max, then I would uh, recommend uh, Zhang Fei is the first one that I'd recommend, because he has strong defense, he's a melee-based guy, and he reduces the army damage, which uh, obviously saves resources. So why would you want to save army damage? Well, here's why. All right, in order to recruit new troops, so for example, I'll recruit 200 here, you need food, wood, iron, all this sort of stuff. So those are resources uh, that you're going to have to expend. So the more that you can save early game, the more you can spend on uh, upgrading these buildings, which obviously is better for your economy. So there's quite a nice balance between sort of um, strength versus economy here. You build too many troops, you're not going to have the economy to support those troops. If you focus purely on the economy, you're going to need to recruit troops eventually. But if we can limit damage, for example, in that recent battle, I lost, what, 200 troops? If I was, for example, able to lose only 100, then I would spend half the resources on replenishing the army. Pretty uh, pretty standard stuff. Something else I would recommend if you're sort of min-maxing things, if I go over here to uh, Pan Feng. Liu Bao, where is he? He's here somewhere. There he is. All right, let's deploy him in this line. Why have I done that? Well, if I, have to, if I take a look at this guy, you'll see that he does uh, intelligence damage, right? So you've got these uh, attributes on the side, uh, which is also, again, another layer that... I don't even have time to cover in this video. But as a general rule, it's good to match up a strength guy with an intelligence guy. Liu Bao, obviously intelligence, and well, you can guess who our strength guy is. Because of the sheer amount of uh, different abilities that they have, you can do a lot of stuff in terms of buffing and, uh, and, and forming a strategy. For example, if I was going to go like all out damage, then maybe I'd focus on this sort of stuff that we looked at earlier. Or you could focus on a support based guy. Let me have a look at one of the other generals. For example, still some intelligence for one random, random enemy uh, commander. So you can focus on buffs and debuffs as part of your strategy as well. So you could have a an entire setup that was just focused on weakening the enemy. And then one guy like Pan that came in and did all the damage. Alternatively, you could have a lot of guys like Pan and just sort of went for a war of attrition sort of thing. Alright, I reckon it's the time we uh, we go occupy with uh, another one led by Pan. With the uh, reassign. There we go, look at that. Right, they only have two guys, so this should be... Oh no... This is going to be brutal. Let's see how quickly this guy falls. Oh, he's scheming. Let's see if his schemes can get him out of this. And one second, the cavalry man is dead. Go on, get the schemer. Let's see if it helped him. That should be that. Oh, he's got quick quit, but he's dead now. So, uh, it didn't really help him. And we already lost 186 troops. That's good. Now we're going to deploy our gathering boys. Pick up some stone. Well, it's iron, isn't it? Oh, it is stone. Good. Right. One Zhao done. Get in there. You know what we we, uh, we pay you for. Uh, I think we'd probably benefit if he was in the center. But we're going to swap those two around. All right, lads. Now we've collected all the stone, we can uh, upgrade our palace to level four. And now we have a fabulous hall. <laughs> and we can grab ourselves a sentry tower. Why do we want a sentry tower? Well, we can place these down uh, somewhere like... I don't know. This guy's... I don't, I don't like it. Should we start making them bandits? I start making a move towards it. I could have started encroaching. I'm gonna start encroaching on Joel, you know. Well, there are some resources down here. Oh, this is tricky. There are a lot of resources here. I kind of want to encroach on Joel's territory. That would make me happy. You know what? We're gonna do it. So let's occupy this guy, this place here. Then the main man himself. Obviously, uh, Pan has never left down before, and he's not intending to start now. So that's an easy win. And we can build ourselves. A sentry tower. Oh my god, we can call it something. Uh, uh, I'm gonna call it the power tower. <laughs> well, lads, I think that's where we'll leave it for, for, for this week. Uh, next week, I'll be going over a little bit more advanced stuff. Uh, we'll start looking into more specific tactics. Maybe we'll even look at the single player campaign. Who knows? But yeah. For now, once again, thank you so much, Pick War Thrones, for, uh, for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you all next week. I didn't really think I was going <laughs> to end the video without showing you exactly what this is going to do, huh? And there you go. We've got the power tower. Which, look at that. Ah, oh, look at all these resources we've got. Screw you, Joel. They're mine now. Oh, wait. Yeah, he's not got a line. This is great. Now we have all of this glorious land. 
right up to Joel's gate. The power tower has done his job. Probably spend some time now just like collecting these level three ones and, uh, and just sorting everything out. But yeah, now actually goodbye. <laughs>